Hit the subscribe button or visit us at auau.auanet.org. Welcome to this video guide to posterior urethral valves and management via cold knife ablation. Posterior urethral valves are a congenital anomaly of the male urethra that occur in approximately 1 to 2 out of every 10,000 live male births. They are thought to arise from defects in urethral development between weeks 9 and 14 of gestation, and they result in bladder outlet obstruction which can frequently progress to end-stage renal disease. PUVs are also known to cause oligohydramnios or anhydramnios, which can lead to pulmonary hypoplasia. The majority of PUVs are known as type 1 valves, which originate near the varomentanum and extend distally towards the prostatal membranous junction. About 5% of cases are type 3 valves, which present as annular rings that can occur in varying locations. Type 2 valves have not been definitively reported since early reports and will not be discussed. Initial diagnostic testing often includes a renal bladder ultrasound, which may show a thickened bladder with dilated posterior urethra, a voiding cystourethrogram, which may additionally show vesicourethral reflux, and cystoscopy for confirmation of the diagnosis. In this image, we're able to see the postnatal renal ultrasound of a patient with type 3 posterior urethral valves showing bilateral urinary tract dilatation of high-risk P3 grade, and further evaluation with a voiding cystourethrogram was recommended. In the image on the left, the bladder ultrasound of the same patient showed a thickened trabeculated bladder consistent with bladder outlet obstruction. Shown on the right is the classic finding of a distended bladder with a dilated posterior urethra, which due to its shape is named the keyhole sign. On our patient's voiding cystourethrogram, bladder diverticula could now be clearly visualized along with the dilated posterior urethra. VCUG is considered the gold standard in diagnostic imaging and may show vesicourethral reflux. Given this patient's findings, cystoscopy was performed to confirm the diagnosis followed by cold knife ablation, which will be shown later in the video. Postoperatively, the nadir creatinine in the infant's first year of life is highly predictive of long-term renal function outcomes. The majority of literature on PUV supports that a serum creatinine of less than 0.8 mg per deciliter portends a minimal risk for developing end-stage renal failure, whereas a value greater than 1 to 1.2 mg per deciliter at one year of age predicts a higher risk for requiring future renal replacement therapy. Before surgery, all patients should undergo respiratory assessment given the risk of pulmonary hypoplasia, and a urethral catheter may be necessary to relieve bladder outlet obstruction. Of note, urethral catheter placement can be made difficult both by the valves themselves as well as by the dilated posterior urethra. Creatinine levels should be monitored as lower creatinine has been shown to correlate with better outcomes. Within the first 24 hours of life, however, creatinine will still be affected by maternal circulation. Finally, prophylactic antibiotics are recommended until the VCUG can be completed and should be continued if evidence of reflux is seen. Options for surgical approach include cold knife ablation, which will be shown in the next slides, or laser ablation. If a cystoscope cannot be passed through the urethra and direct ablation is not possible, a vesicostomy is indicated. Next, cold knife ablation will be discussed in detail for type 1 and type 3 valves. First, the cystoscope is passed through the urethra, the valves are first seen, and the bladder is visualized. Next, the blade is attached and aligns at the 7 o'clock position for the first incision. The knife is then safely rotated to the 5 o'clock position and aligned with the left valve. Given the small scale, valve ablation can be technically challenging and repeated inspection of valve integrity followed by any necessary additional incisions 
aids in ensuring adequate ablation. This patient presented as a relatively mild case at two years of age when he was hospitalized with pneumonia. In patients with more severe presentations who have larger, more obstructive valves, visualization can be difficult. Finally, the valves are inspected one last time and successful ablation can be appreciated. Our second patient is the same case of type 3 posterior urethral valves whose imaging we saw in the previous slides. As the scope is advanced, numerous diverticula in the trabeculated bladder are visible, as well as the severely dilated posterior urethra. It can be appreciated that compared to the first case shown, the valves are circumferential, billowy, and more severely obstructive. Ablation technique is similar with the addition of a 12 o'clock incision. This patient presented the more severe case of hydroureteronephrosis in the first day of life. As newborns have small bladders, special attention should be paid to flow rate as overdistension and possibly rupture can occur. Finally, the valves can be inspected after all three incisions have been made and ablation is complete. Thank you.